Hey guys, what's up? This is Nate. Here it is Thursday, February 16th, and today was all about the launch of Mountain Line, which is Apple's next generation operating system for the Mac. Now, they released the first developer preview of it today, so you have to be a developer to access this new build, um, but it does pack a whole bunch of new features from iOS, including Game Center, Notification Center, a Twitter integration, and a whole bunch of other great features. Now, I do have my hands on this build, and I'm going to be uploading a, a bunch of videos over the next couple of days, so you guys can get a feel of what's new in this operating system and it is supposed to be released to the public sometime late this summer. Also Apple announced today that they plan on releasing new versions of Mac OS every year now so just as they do with iOS we're going to be, get, be getting new versions of Mac OS each and every year. Uh, so with the release of the developer preview of Mountain Lion today and more features of iOS making their way over to the Mac, a lot of people are starting to wonder could iOS and Mac OS become one unified operating system? Well Tim Cook was asked that question in an interview today and he did say that Apple was considering that option and they want to keep their options open going into the future. So I think that it's definitely possible, I think it's going to have to be a couple years first because iOS is definitely going to need to become uh, much more advanced to take on some of the heavier features that Mac Mac OS includes. Speaking of Macs, this week The Verge is reporting that Intel's upcoming Ivy Bridge processors may be in delayed until June of this year. Originally they were supposed to be launched around April, but according to The Verge they may be delayed until June because there is a current uh, overstock of the Sandy Bridge processors and Intel wants to wait until some of that overstock is depleted before, before they go ahead and refresh the current lineup. Now this could be a blow for some people who are waiting to upgrade their Mac because Apple's not going to refresh any of the Macs until this uh, Ivy Bridge processor is released because there's really, really no point for them to do it because if they release a new version right now, eventually Ivy Bridge will be released and it will already be outdated. So if you're looking to get maybe a new MacBook Pro, MacBook Air, uh, you hopefully uh, they will be released in April, but just be warned you may have to wait a couple more months. Today, Mac Rumors posted some images of a possible iOS 5.1 Goldmaster build, and uh, these new and some of the new features from these images indicate that there will be Japanese Siri support and also a new camera icon on the uh, slide to unlock screen. So in iOS 5 as of right now if you want to access the camera from the lock screen you have to double tap the home button, select the camera icon and it will bring you into the camera app. Now supposedly there is going to be a camera icon that remains consistently at the lock screen so you don't have to press or double tap the home button for it to appear. It will always remain there uh, right next to slide to unlock. And then all you have to do is select that icon. The slide to unlock screen will simply swipe up and it will give you quicker access to the camera. So that'd be a great feature to see. A lot of people are expecting to see iOS 5.1 sometime in early March alongside the launch of the iPad 3. So to wrap up Thursday thoughts today, I'll talk about AT&T's 4G LTE network and how it relates to the iPad 3. Well, this week some images of a 4G LTE micro SIM card for AT&T's network were posted online and a lot of people were saying oh well this is a good sign that the iPad 3 will support 4G LTE because it used a uh, micro SIM card in the iPad 2 so most likely it will use a micro SIM card in the iPad 3 and support the 4G LTE technology. Well an AT&T spokesperson replied to this article simply stating that some of their products right now actually implement this micro uh, SIM card that supports 4G LTE but nonetheless I th it, is an, it, uh, it does make the option of 4G LTE available to Apple to use uh, if they want to make it compatible on AT&T's network. Now, uh, the Wall Street Journal this week did say that they believe that the iPad 3 will support 4G LTE, and there are a whole bunch of tech sites that say it will. There are some, on the other hand, that are expressing doubts. And the reason for this is, in the past, Apple has known to be very conservative when it comes to implementing new technologies. They're never the first to do anything, and they always want it to, and they always want it to be implemented very well when they choose uh, to use the latest technologies, because they don't want to have bad battery life and customer experiences everything to them. And as of right now, Verizon's 4G LTE network is pretty solid. It's not everywhere. There's definitely a lot of places that don't have it yet, but it is pretty good. But on the other hand, AT&T's network is, uh, 4G LTE network is very small, and Sprint's at this point is I think pretty much non-existent. So Apple still may choose not to implement. Personally, I think they will just because it's been out on Verizon's network for almost a year now. There's been a lot of devices that support it. I think that they can pack a good enough battery in here for those that actually do live in an area that support it uh, will get a good experience out of it. And those that are on a 3G network are going to get even better battery life since they're not using those fast data speeds. So thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Please like it, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.